the first chapter, we went straight to writing code, but now we're going to write tests alongside our code. So let's go right into the first challenge. Write a program that asks the user for two numbers and then prints the sum. In the chapters directory, create a new directory called chapter2. Under chapter2, create a file called addnumbers.py. Then we'll add one more file called testAddNumbers.py. With PyTest, test files must start with a test underscore. That's how PyTest knows which files are regular files and which files are meant for tests. In addNumbers.py, write a function called add that takes two parameters x and y and returns their sum. For now, just follow along with the code I'm going to write and we'll explain it a little bit later. Let's look at a theory about this function we'd like to test. On a piece of paper or a virtual notepad, We'll start by writing down our theories as scenarios to prove the feature, in this case this function, does what it's supposed to. I'll add a single scenario for now. Scenarios are examples used to describe what we expect from our theories. We start by describing our feature. In this case, our feature is meant to add two numbers to get their sum. From there, we write down our theories against the feature. Here's my first theory as a scenario. Adding two even numbers returns an even number. I think that's right for all even numbers, but let's provide an example because that's the most important part of our scenario. Given x equals 2 and y equals 2, when I add them together, then the sum should be 4 and be even. This given when then format is called Gherkin. It's a really simple pattern to follow. Given some inputs, when some action is done, then what do I expect? It's that easy. Using this scenario, I can now write my test. In testAddNumbers.py, we'll write a test function for the scenario and then explain the anatomy of the test function. As you're copying this test, I will go over what it's doing starting with line 1. When we define test functions, just like files, they must start with test underscore. This is how PyTest knows which functions are tests and which ones are not. Number is our variable and we assign whatever add returns to it using this assign operator. The assert keyword is used to write expectations in code. In this case, we check that number is equal to 4. If true, the test will pass. If false, the test will fail. The equality operator is used to check that the left side, number, is equal to the right side, 4. In this case it reads, is number equal to 4? And will return true or false. Remember, true and false are called booleans. One last thing to note is that our add function has a red squiggly line underneath it. This is because the current file doesn't know what add is we need to import our add function from our other file. But luckily, PyCharm makes this really easy with context actions. If you hover over add, you'll see a context menu comes up saying, import this name. You can also click on add, and you'll get a red light bulb showing that there's an error, but it has different ways to resolve this. Let's try this first one, import this name, and we can see our chapters dot chapter 2 dot add numbers file 
and the dot add function. We'll click this one here. Automatically, an import statement gets added to the top of the file, and the red squiggly went away. We'll talk about modules in a future lesson, but now it's your turn to write some scenarios. I want you to write two more scenarios for this feature. The first scenario is adding two negative numbers returns a negative number. And the second scenario, you'll have to come up by yourself. Make sure to use the Gherkin format to write them, the given one then, but don't change the feature because all of these scenarios are to test that feature. Then, try writing the automated tests for each scenario. Before moving on, I wanted to show the tests I came up with and how I wrote them, but I also wanted to show how to run the tests. Hopefully, you've seen these green arrows appear next to your test definitions. If you click on this play button, you actually have a run the test and a debug the test. All you gotta click for now is run and that'll execute the single test. Hopefully you see the test pass. Another way is to right click anywhere in the file and then click run. This will run all tests in this file. It might seem like we're done, but take a look at the first test we wrote. Our theory said that the sum should return an even number. But how do we know that 4 is an even number? We're not actually checking that it's even, only that the sum is equal to 4. We'll need to fix this to really test our theory correctly. Unfortunately, this is a common problem in testing. If you don't design your features, theories, and scenarios, you may not understand what the feature is supposed to do or how to test it properly. Just because there are tests doesn't mean that they're testing the right things in the right way. To solve this, we're going to write a new function to see if a number is even or not. But, as always, we'll write tests first. We'll just add them right above these. We'll say test 4 is even. Here's an example. We're going to make sure that is even of 4 is true. Let's make one more. Test 5 is odd. And assert is even 5 is false. Is even has a red squiggly because our file doesn't know what this function is. That's expected because we haven't written the function yet. However, writing the test first is helpful because now we know what the function should be named and how it should behave. We even have the test to make sure we wrote the function correctly. Switch over to our addNumbers.py and we'll add this isEven function below it. We start by adding the def keyword, which means define. In our test, we call our function is even, so let's make sure we call it the same thing. Then we passed in a number. We can either call this parameter num, or maybe we can call it number. Either way, we just want it to be descriptive and make sense. Then within the body of this function, we now have to create the logic to check if a number is even or not. If the number we pass in is divisible by 2, then we will return true. Else, return false. This operator will divide number by 2, and if there's anything remaining, then we know it's odd. So else, return false. However, if we divide the number by 2 and there is no remainder, aka 0, then we know it's even return true. To make this even more clear, let's pretend that number was the number 2. If you were to divide 2 by 2, you would get 1, which has no remainder, meaning that 2 is an even number. However, if we had number equal 1, this would now return 0.5. So you would have a remainder of 0.5, not 0, 
So we would go to this else, return, false. We can make sure this works by going to our tests and running them. But what we need to do first is get rid of these red squigglies. So I'm going to hover over it and then import is even from our add numbers module. Click this and it adds it automatically to line one. I'll click the play button and run this test. It passes and then I'll do the same thing for the second one. That passed too. So it looks like our is even function is working properly. The last thing we'll do is inside of our other three tests that we had previously, we need to make sure that the sum is not just four, but that four is even. And you've seen what that looks like up here. So in one more line, we're gonna add a second assert to make sure that number is also even. In my second test, we're going to say assert is even number is false this time because it's a negative two that we're expecting. If I wanted to finish my last test, I would need to make one more function to make sure that the number is positive. I won't do that in the lesson here, but feel free to take that on as a challenge if you'd like to. What I really want you to understand is that what we create in our scenarios needs to match what we have in our automated tests. Can you believe we're still on challenge one for this chapter? It looked so easy at first. In the next lesson, we'll wrap it up using if else statements and negative tests.